We've covered a lot of ground with Tony Abbott before the break on the implications of the Israel-Palestine conflict for Britain and the wider Western world. There is a link between events in Israel, such as today's opening of the Rafah crossing or yesterday's IDF bombing of a Hamas commander at the Jabala civilian camp, and events unfolding in Britain, such as yesterday's pro-Palestinian sit-in in Liverpool Street Station, or the man who dumped a box of mice at McDonald's the other day. So with me to discuss the implications of this is my panel, historian and broadcaster Tessa Dunlop, and the former editor of The Sun, Kelvin McKenzie. Tessa, I noticed that you were not entirely agreeing with Tony Abbott on some things he said. I, you didn't seem to agree with him on Saudi Arabia, a bit nervous about that. Um, but doesn't the West have to support its friends? Yeah, I think, and I noticed Tony Abbott tried to do it, and I wanted you to challenge him, and, and you didn't. This idea that there is an equivalence between the Ukraine-Russia war and what's currently going on in the Middle East. And I think that's um, what's made the current conflict so challenging for media outlets to handle, for politicians to handle, and indeed the way it's unfolded in our streets, how to respond to that. The, the idea of a goody-baddy war, we could all wear Zelensky on, her back, on our back. He was the real great Jewish leader and still is of our time, I believe, Zelensky, the unsung hero. Uh, we could have blue and yellow emblazoned, we could do sponsored walks, and it was a very seemingly clear cut and remains so. And I think that to fly either flag uh, when it comes to Gaza versus Israel is hugely contentious, as we've seen. We get called out uh, by our Home Secretary for hate marches, even though the vast majority of those uh, who have been on the streets in support of Palestine would say quite the reverse. It is for their concern, their compassion for fellow humankind. But couldn't we actually all wear the Israeli flag at the moment? They suffered this terrible attack, don't they deserve well, support? I, 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 would, I would certainly wear it, that's for sure. And the, uh, I think the other issue really is that we are concerned as people that there are two major wars basically going on in our, in our area, right? Because thanks to media, right, we know a lot about these wars. Thanks to video, we see a lot of the tragedies of these things very because quickly. And on that basis, let me, let me finish. On that basis, I feel very concerned, and I agree 100% with Abbott, that with China round the corner, right, we do not know, if you ask any person, nobody here will know, none of, your, none of your viewers will know what the outcomes are going to be. And that is enough. And on the question of whether there is a good Jewish leader or bad Jewish leader, if you were an Israeli and you were surrounded by your enemies and they were attacking you at every turn, you too would have a very right wing leader. And I understand that completely. And I'm sure most of our, most of our viewers would. Indeed. Uh, but arguably the horrific, I mean, in terms of civilian casualties, to give you a statistic, in 18 months of Ukrainian war, something like 10,000 civilians have been killed in that war. In about two weeks, 7,000 Gazans have been killed. It's a very different kind of conflict. And actually, where is, why should the Gazans suffer to that degree for what was the most catastrophic failure of Israeli security. Well, it's got nothing to do... No, the idea that there has does. been a catastrophe of intelligence there's, 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 there's should not be a reason that you shouldn't go in and attack the very people who are killing okay. people in their beds. You agree with that, I, I don't agree, you? and I hate the ISIS star killing. It's revolting. It is unbelievably heinous. And I think all of us had a, had a jolt. You checked the ones you loved that morning on the 7th. It was dastardly for all of humanity. But we also have to own, as Guterres said, these things do not happen in a vacuum, which is one of the reasons why Mossad, Israel, the extraordinary barrier between Gaza and Israel, these are epic failures. And it's very convenient to focus on the conflict <laughs> and to ignore a failure of really a terrible administration. Ben Benjamin Netanyahu's administration was why, why do you, by why do you think? Why do you think you have an ultra-right wing? government in Israel today, because whether it's at Lebanon, Iran, okay. Gaza, yes. West Bank, East Bank, it doesn't matter where it is, right, these people are trying to kill you and they're trying to drive you out of the Middle East. Remember, Hamas 
do not believe. Have you seen what they've said today? There will be more October 7s, right? We are going to annihilate Israel. We are going to drive them out of it. What would you do, right? You're the prime minister, even as a, even as a socialist prime minister. What would you say? Oh, really? Oh, well, let me think about that. Uh, oh, right. You've just killed 1,200 people, which, by the way, as, as I keep on saying, Pat McFadden, Labour campaign, Guy said that that's the equivalent of 12,000 English people killed, British people killed. What would you do? No, Tessa, tell me. I mean, tell the audience. I, what would you do? Let's flip that round. No, no, no just no. answer the question. There you're the leader I, of Israel and your people have been killed like that. What and, on and, earth would you, you do? you have said that Israel, the position Israel is in, delivers, by definition, a hard right leader. And I'm now going to say the position that the Gazans are in, effectively in a ghetto, a tiny strip of land, delivers hardcore horror terrorism. So both sides, you need to pull it back, remove the heat. Yes, better the security. I agree. But actually, ideally, we would have never got to this place. But one of the reasons is, with impunity, Benjamin Netanyahu, there were violent settlements in the West Bank. We turned around because we were focused on Ukraine. And what I think as a global community, and we've done it horribly in this last two weeks, how many times have we checked in with Ukraine? How many times have we seen how their counteroffensive is progressing against the Russians? You know, it, you know seemingly what? People we can have, only uh, manage one thing at a time. I, I, I agree with that. I can only manage one enormous event at a time. I think most people are the same, right? I, can't, I, 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 I feel desperate. I find myself not reading as much about Ukraine or not embracing as much because I'm more worried about what is going to happen in Israel, because my fear is if Iran says, does what it says it's going to do, where does that lead? But Tessa's point is really important, that although I don't agree with you that we shouldn't compare the two, because I think they are basically the same thing. They are our enemies trying to bring down the West one way or another. Putin benefits from what's going on in Israel because it distracts attention from Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And you're absolutely right. We need to remind people of what's going on in Ukraine and the importance of carrying on to support. There was a thing in the paper today about a million shells going from North Korea yeah. to the Russians. Yeah. So the Russians are still focusing on Ukraine. And we, at least in the public sphere, I yeah. doubt this is true of the government, are looking at it less closely. And I worry that the revulsion that we are seeing being triggered in people, that's why they're pouring onto the streets. It's very hard to look at the images of Gaza. You know that 50% of their communities under the age of 18. I mean, mm. how culpable is one legally in this country under the age of 18? Uh, and to watch the death toll rise, the fear is then you, you shun war generally. But this is... so, so not only are you anti what's going on or, or wanting the immediate ceasefire in Israel, but also you want to put the lights out in Ukraine. So, so this, this raises with me the significant problem in our country. Not that our country matters a damn, actually. In yeah. the truth about the matter, it doesn't yeah. matter a damn whether, whether Sunak's in favour of this or Starmer's in favour of that. Please, don't it's just bother. just noise. Don't okay. bother me, right? is the religious aspect on our streets, which I never thought I'd see. I mean, I agree with um, Nigel Farage about this. This is an astonishing aspect. Are we developing an ongoing issue of a religious kind of... It's not a war, but it is a political unease, a battle. There is something going on out there right now which is based around... A being a Muslim or B being a Jew, I would not like to be. I would not like to be Jewish today. And I know that my friends who are Jewish, and you know this, you will have yeah. Jewish friends as well. My sister-in-law. Yeah, are very concerned Concern. right now about where they are. Well, thank you. Um, I said my panel would be particularly pugnacious, and they were, and therefore we didn't get to talk about Michael Gove. We'll have to keep that for another occasion.